Okay, so this is my new LiPo battery charging setup. Uh, I'm using two 12 volt uh, server power supplies wired in series uh, from Feather Merchant RC. And uh, this creates 24 volts, uh, 1000 watts. And I have that uh, run into uh, my eye charger from Progressive RC. And as you can see, I'm doing a balance charge uh, through, I'm parallel charging all of the packs at once. Um, but it's just monitoring the success. So, getting pretty close, almost done. And uh, inside this box, which is actually the iCharger box, um, are my four uh, 6S LiPo 5000 milliamp hour batteries. So I have a total of 10 amp hours at the moment. And I'll talk about the differences between my SLA setup and this. Um, I've, I've already read, wrote about I don't know, 45 or so miles on this battery pack. It's working out really well. Uh, these guys are little cell checkers that I wire up uh, to the balance leads when I'm riding. Um, and I have them set to 3.6 volts. So uh, when any of the cells drops to 3.6, then I, I hear uh, those start to beep. And it lets me know that I'm basically out of juice. The LiPo batteries have a pretty consistent discharge rate uh, up until the very end, and then they dr they sink like a rock. So um, basically at 3.5, you're done uh, with LiPo batteries. <clears throat> and uh, I only charge them to uh, 4.17 because um, I'm trying to extend the life a little bit. I might even start charging them to 4.15 once I finish my battery setup. I plan on adding uh, two more of the 6S 5000 milliamp hour uh, turning packs, as well as getting uh, some 2S packs to overvolt my motor just a little bit and give me a little bit more torque and a little more top end. But this is working out really well so far. Uh, range is about 18 to 20 miles at this exact setup, uh, going from 4.17 down to 3.6. Um, and that's with hills. Um, I live in Portland, Oregon, like I said in my last video. So I, uh, I'm up and down and all over the place. So and I, I rode, I, I put three bike rides yesterday. I put a lot of miles on just by myself yesterday. Um, the parallel charging board is from Progressive RC as well. And um, so how I have them wired is that each pair of uh, battery packs uh, is wired in parallel. And then I, I wire those two parallel packs in series. And then that gets connected to my bike. Um, and, you know, the connectors, you, you can choose whatever connector you, you want. I chose the, uh, the XT60s just because I really like them. Um, they're, really, they're really nice and solidly built. They have a good temperature rating. And um, they're kind of a pain in the butt to solder, but not that bad. Um, just got to be careful with it. So I actually bought uh, I bought these, but I had to solder um, solder the leads together to make my extensions for the, uh, the packs themselves, the charge leads. Not too bad. So yeah, that's what I got so far. Um, and I'll show you the weight difference between my my uh, new pack and my old pack, and I'll uh, I'll pop this box open once it's done charging, and so you can see the cells themselves. So here's a shot of the battery box opened up. So I've got the uh, four 6S 5000 milliamp hour batteries. And uh, this box works out, you know, pretty well for a temporary situation. It's got some foam inside on all the corners and the top. And uh, then I just tape it up with some gaff tape and run all the cords out in one section. So I'll tape it back up and I'll show you the weight difference between my old pack, which is an SLA pack, and uh, this little guy, which are technically the same amount of amp hours, so um, I'll show you the difference. Alright, so here's my box taped back together. I just run all the balance leads out the side, and then I have all my power leads uh, leading in the same place. And uh, then I'll plug in, you know, at parallel and series, but what I'll do is I'll uh, next time you see this battery pack, I'll have those plugged in, and that'll be the total weight uh, of this pack versus this pack. I'll put it on this scale right here. You can see. All right, so here's my SLA pack. 
It weighs about 26 pounds. This pack will only only got me about six miles before being uh, unusable. It's uh, putting out 48 volts, and it's I believe it's four packs uh, or maybe even six packs wired series. I'm not going to pull it apart because I really don't care. I'm going to end up just using this pack, I think, to uh, uh, my solar panels that I have. I'm going to run power into this guy and then hopefully use this to charge my other packs. So we'll find out. But uh, so now I'll put on my new LiPo pack and you can see the difference. Alright, so here is my LiPo pack. It weighs about six pounds. And that's with uh, that's with the cell checkers and everything wired up properly. And this gives me a range of about 18 miles. So 6 pounds versus 26 pounds. And uh, you know, three times the range. And let's just uh, show you the voltage here. So I can do this without two hands. Forty-nine volts. So yeah, that's what I've got so far. And then basically, what I do is I've <coughs> I've lined this with uh, some old uh, kitchen aprons that my girlfriend lent me, <laughs> and I wired up the uh, power cable to an XT60 as well. And the guy, the SLA that was in there before was uh, tied down by these um, these really big uh, zip ties, but I wanted a removable solution, so I went to Home Depot and I bought these uh, these thick uh, Velcro straps um, that I run down through the, the bottom of the bag, and I attached the battery itself to the, uh, the rack. And then I have a, a larger bungee cord to um, just kind of like tighten up the bag and make sure it's not going to be flopping around too much. But the most important thing is to make sure the batteries are locked down tight. So the only other modifications I've done since uh, my last video is I raised up um, the rack about an inch and a half. Um, that gives me a little bit more clearance above the uh, rear wheel. Um, that way I could soften up the suspension a little bit so it makes it a little bit smoother ride um, and I don't have to worry about the rack touching the tire at all. Um, otherwise I haven't made any other adjustments. The lighter pack is nice because these would come loose and they would the pack would swing a little bit um, with the SLA battery pack. But now that I'm almost 20 pounds lighter, uh, I don't have that problem at all. So it's working out really well. The only other thing I did is I just replaced the duct tape with a nice gaffer's tape. <laughs> Good old gaffer's tape. But yeah, everything's working out great. Um, the one thing, let's see. Yeah, the things I could say would be, if you're going to, this particular phone case, I got this on uh, eBay or Amazon, I can't remember, I think it was Amazon, uh, for really cheap. Um, the only downside to it is that this connection is, or the how it holds in place is, is kind of janky, so I've used some gaff tape and some wire to make sure that this like doesn't go anywhere. Um, and the other thing would be uh, these cell checkers. I don't recommend. Uh, they are super cheap, so if you just need a cheap solution, and I do suggest monitoring individual cell voltage while you're riding, with something anyway. Um, but these ones in particular, the reasons why reason why I don't like them is because the battery is really easy to press. So when this is in my pack, um, it can you know the button can get bumped, and then it you know gets put into you know the mode to select which voltage to run. Um, so it renders it useless because it's trying to, you know, wait for your input basically. So I'm going to end up getting something different for that. Probably one that just doesn't, you know, like a battery medic or, you know, some of those because, uh, just something that doesn't, you know, where it's harder to push the buttons and, uh, 
that way I can just toss them in my bag and not really worry about it. But you know, these were like two bucks or three bucks on Hobby King. So if you need something quick, then they work pretty well for that, I guess. So there you go. That's the next update. Okay, and lastly, uh, this is my pack all strapped down and ready to go. Um, very solidly mounted to the frame. Um, <clears throat> this is you know, where I have all these little cell checker things and I just kind of keep them nice and loose. I like to keep the cabling kind of loose as well. I don't like to strap that down just to keep the connections from uh, any pressure on them. And I did double check the voltage before I hooked it up to the the main of the controller just to make sure that it's still reading uh, 49 volts and it is. Um, yeah, so that's it. And I'll be uh, getting a mount for my camera to be able to put on my handlebars and do a time, you know, start doing time lapse videos of my commutes. But I have, yeah, mobbed all over Portland so far uh, testing this system out and it's working out great. So I'll keep you updated in the future.